So today is the 1st of July, 2021. We've come together to practice samadhi, to bring our minds to unification and collectedness. So we put effort into this practice of making the mind peaceful. And the mind that's not peaceful, this is based on causes and conditions. Because the mind is accustomed to uh, liking to being attracted to the objects of the six senses, the body, the mind, the eyes, the ear, the nose, the tongue, and liking these sense objects. And one can think and recall uh, the sense experiences that one has liked or enjoyed. And one thinks of these uh, past experiences and brings them up again in the present as thoughts. So this is a memory, a perception from the past that arises in the present. And this interferes with the mind uh, gathering into samadhi. And we're also accustomed to the mind uh, disliking, having aversion. And the mind's able to recall these uh, sense experiences that one felt aversive towards. And this anger and aversion can arise again in the present when one remembers these things. And this destroys the samadhi that one may otherwise gain makes the mind agitated and not at peace. And during the course of our practice, we may also get sleepy. Even we may get up to walk and we may still be sleepy then. And the sleepiness uh, interferes with samadhi in a similar way. And this is uh, normal and natural for this to happen. Or the mind may think and doubt without ceasing mind may become uh, busy thinking here and there, thinking about things that annoyed one in the past, and this annoyance arises again in the present, and thinking about all types of things. For instance, if one is in a scary place, one may have a lot of proliferation and busyness of mind. One may fear that people will come to harm oneself. We may also have uh, a lot of thinking about things we like, things we hate, things we love, uh, things we fear, uh, busyness in thinking about all these things, or worry about things that have yet to come, worry about the future, and wondering, oh, what will the future be like? What will happen? And this is a cause for the mind not to be in the present moment. And whether it's uh, impressions from the past or worries about the future, both these uh, habits cause the mind not to experience happiness in the present. So this busyness and worry, this prevents collectedness, prevents the mind from gathering together, and the mind is simply not at peace. And there are also many types of doubts that may arise in the mind. For instance, uh, nowadays people may have doubts about uh, vaccines for the COVID virus, which vaccine is the best one to get, which brand is good. And one may have doubts and fears if there will be dangers uh, in the future about the vaccine. And in wealthy countries, there may be uh, vaccines distributed for free. Some of these countries are the where these vaccines were developed, but still the people there may be scared and have fear and think they might die or become gravely ill. And in Thailand, there are some vaccines, but some people may want a different type than what's available. And this is because of fear, fear of the future. So this is one type of doubt that might arise. Or one may doubt about one's meditation object and one's method of practicing about doubting about how to develop the mind. And when we think like this, these doubts are a cause for the mind not to gather into samadhi. One may think, oh, is uh, repeating Buddha the right meditation method? Is recollecting death the right meditation method? And one may go through many different kamatanas, meditation methods, and wonder if they're the right one for oneself. So one should remember that whatever object of mind uh, that brings the mind to peace, this is uh, shamatha practice. This is the practice of tranquility. 
And there are many types, many ways that this can be done. One can repeat Budo Dhammo Sango or Budang uh, Sarnangachami or other meditation words. We may recollect how the great teachers uh, may teach children. For instance, teaching children whatever it is that you like, just think of just that one thing. Bring the mind to think just about this one object. And if one's able to do this, then one's mind can achieve peace. And if one realizes peace, then one won't doubt anymore. One's mind is fixed with just one object. This can bring the mind to samadhi, to collectedness. So these five hindrances just described are something that all people experience. And there are these five hindrances. They're not six, they're not seven, they're not eight. And these five hindrances are experienced in our own minds. What these five hindrances do is prevent the mind from becoming collected. They're an obstruction to samadhi. And it's just these five. And the Buddha taught this way. He taught about the five hindrances. And the reason he taught about these is to help us realize samadhi in our own experience. So the mind that has mindfulness with the meditation object, this is the way to peace. And when, when the mind is able to stick with the meditation object, then the body and mind become light and at ease. Busyness of mind decreases. Agitation decreases. There may just be a little bit of thinking left. It's as if you can compare the mind to a, a cage or a box, and what's left inside is just a little bit of thinking. And when the mind is gathered in peace like this, then rapture can arise, uh, fullness and happiness of heart arises. Even tears might flow. For instance, listening to the Dhamma, one may have tears flowing, or while chanting, or even while giving a Dhamma talk, fullness and happiness of heart can arise. And when the mind is able to realize this peace and collectedness of samadhi, one should be careful as well. Because with samadhi, if there's a lot of samadhi, then there's a lot of coolness and a lot of happiness in the mind. The mind is very bright and joyous and radiant with a fullness and rapture of heart. And at this point, one may think that this is the path and fruit that the Buddha talked about, that one has realized the enlightenment level of stream entry of Sotapanna. Or one may even think that one has realized full enlightenment, arahantship, because the mind is so happy, so very happy and peaceful in the state of samadhi. Even one may realize the states of absorption, the jhanas. And at this point, one may think that one has realized the highest peace, the highest happiness. But this isn't so. It's merely the samadhi covering over the kilesas, the defilements that obstruct the mind. And so the samadhi is able to stop the kilesas and suppress them, and the mind can feel very happy. But the mind may also deludedly think that it's the highest happiness. And what the Buddha taught is the highest happiness. And what is this highest happiness? It's the cutting off of attachment. This is the most important point. It's the destruction of delusion, the destruction of ignorance. This is what the Buddha taught. And this destruction of ignorance is the highest happiness. And the path to realize this that the Buddha taught is this path of sila, samadhi, and panya, virtue, collectedness, and wisdom, this noble eightfold path. And this path is only found in the Buddha's teaching, the Buddha's dispensation. So may you walk this path. And if one keeps walking, whatever amount one has practiced in the past, up till the present, one keeps making effort, and one is capable of seeing the Dhamma in this way. One sees the nature of reality, the nature of Dhamma, sees that everything is impermanent, anichang, and is empty. And one sees this for oneself. One sees the truth in one's own experience, in one's own heart, and one knows it for oneself. One sees clearly in one's own mind. 
This is something that the wise know for themselves. And when, at this point, one sees that everything in the world, it's all a convention. Even everything that's uh, of value, even things considered to be of great value, like gemstones and diamonds and so on, one sees that this value is merely a convention. For instance, if one goes to a place that has no water, and the people there really want and need water, then the whatever precious gemstone one may have would be less valuable than water. And if one goes to a place without food, and the people there really need food, then people may not even exchange food for a very precious gem. So one sees that these material things change in value according to conditions. Their value is merely a matter of convention. We may ask what is of value in our own hearts. We seek that which is of value in our own hearts. And that is the triple gem, the gem of the Buddha, the gem of the Dhamma, and the gem of the Sangha, which have incomparable value in our own hearts and minds. And this is something that's a value beyond the value of the world. So the Buddha taught to have mindfulness in the present moment and all the four postures of sitting, walking, standing, and lying down. And to repeat, Bhutto, Dhammo, Sangho, these are a skillful means that one can use as one's meditation word. So one should practice a lot, train their minds a lot, to the point where one is skilled and proficient at this mental training. And when the mind is able to realize peace and collectedness, then one is capable of knowing and understanding the teachings of the Buddha. And this is the very best thing that one can do. And through this seeing clearly the nature of things, one is able to overcome all suffering. And whatever other paths there are, uh, this is the only path to overcome suffering. This is the way to overcome suffering. So we may consider ourselves to have a very great fortune a very good fortune to have met with these teachings that are capable of bringing us to the end of suffering. This means that we have a great merit and parami, uh, spiritual virtues, to meet with the Dhamma of the Buddha and to meet with the great enlightened masters of the present time, such as Lumpu Man and Lumpu Cha. So may you be firmly intent, may you really set your hearts on this Dhamma practice and practice according to what we've been taught. And even if one doesn't see the Dhamma clearly, at least one can reduce one's suffering, reduce one's worries, reduce one's fears, and bring more stability to the mind. This is something of immense benefit in our lives. So we continue to walk this path and train ourselves not to get lost along the way, but to bring our minds to peace and collectedness, to train our minds in wisdom, in panya, the wisdom that's able to let go of things, and to see clearly that all the things in the world are not a me, not a mind, not a self. And we learn just like in the Satipatthana Sutta, the Sutta on the Four Foundations of Mindfulness, that the body is just a body, the mind is just the mind, the feelings are just feelings, dhammas are just dhammas. It's all just convention. None of it is a me, or a mine, or a self. May you contemplate like this, that things are just as they are. May you develop wisdom and contemplate clearly into anicca, dukkha, anatta, impermanence, stress, and not self. And in this way, you're able to overcome all suffering. And you're able to overcome suffering in this very life. So may you set your hearts on this, and may you cultivate your mindfulness to a high degree. <laughs>